The Small Business Show, episode 161, for Wednesday, March 7th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business owners here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. How about you, man? I am doing pretty good. Good. I'm, uh, you know, trying getting stuff done, uh, kicking something and taking names. And yeah. can you say, can you say ass? And I think we can say the, ass on the podcast. <laughs> okay. I just yeah. want to be sure. Yeah. And not get, not get the explicit <laughs> label on there. No, I, no well, it's good. up to us to put the explicit label on actually. I, yeah. we just flip a yeah, switch yeah. when we publish. And, ah, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, that, that's good. Okay. I'm, I'm very good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I'm busy. I've got, um, you know how I always like to kind of experiment and try new things. And I've got some, a new, business venture i'm poking around at trying to and maybe, maybe i'm not i'm not ready to talk about it but maybe okay. in a few shows we'll chat about it and maybe revisit my handbag experiment that i did uh, about a year and a half ago and yeah. see how that's going so yeah i'd like to i'd like to, good, I'd, I'd like to revisit chat. that one too yeah 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 but yeah it's a, you, yeah today <laughs> <laughs> well i what i wanted to say was our sponsor oh. for this episode is jamf at yes. jamf.com slash sbs where you can get your first three devices free we'll talk more about the details of that in a minute but i wanted to get that out here in the uh in the intro to the show so that's cool yeah 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 what i was gonna say is you can always tell about about a year and a half two years into a business or a project i start to get you know a little i, I don't want to use the word bored because it is very interesting to me but it's like okay this is running now this is working or not working. Or not, so you're going to right. jettison yeah. it and move on to something else. Or if it's working, it's like, okay, well now I've got this process and I develop a system. Now, now what I can do, what else can I do that will, uh, uh, take more of my time yeah. <laughs> actually, but uh, challenge yourself and all that kind of stuff. And I think I'm kind of there now. So it's good. We'll chat about that, chat okay. about that in the future. But today we're going to talk about taxes because it's an exciting time of year, right? Oh, taxes are actually, you know what? Yes. I, I actually like, taxes in a sense i mean it's it's fun because you you can find your way through someone else's rules oh it's you like know? a challenge right it's like, like a, a challenge puzzle. yeah it is yeah. it's a puzzle and and if you look yes. at it that way i, I mean you got to make sure you don't you don't cross the wrong lines because obviously right. you don't want to go to jail and you yeah, really penalties with a hammer yeah, right? penalties. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So uh, you got to be careful with it, but that's, that sort of adds to the fun, especially when you can find like, Oh really? I didn't know I could take a deduction like that. That's cool. You know, it yeah. saves you a little yeah. money. And when your accountant, yeah. When your accountant leans over and goes, Oh wait, you do what? And, yeah. and that's where, you know, talking to your accountant and we we've discussed this uh, a number of times but just having regular communication with them is important so that they know what's going on in your life and uh you know now that i've got my my office is up in my studio at my house and we had a rodent problem and i mentioned that to the guy and he goes oh well you can write that off because you know you're you're working there all day every day now and i was like really he's like oh yeah absolutely and it was like 2500 bucks you know so it's uh, it's great to have those conversations you know meet your accountant for lunch, uh, send them emails, keep them, yeah. uh, you know, in the loop of what's going on. Not just your business life. But no, just your life maybe, in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you, you enjoy talking to your accountant. Uh, and, and this time my accountant's like, Hey, we need to get together with your personal financial planner too, and get us all in the room. And I was like, Oh, that's a, a great idea, you know? And cause they've been in communication, but never all together. And sure. it was a fascinating meeting because, uh, you kind of pointed out a few conflicts on the, that they were having, uh, to develop the system, you know, yeah. of, of, to, you know, retire, uh, I don't know if I'll ever retire, but you know, have yeah. enough money to be financially, uh, fl you know, free and be autonomous. That, right. that is my, the new thing to be autonomous. Um, and it was great. It was cool. That's but, cool, but man. Back to taxes. I want to stick, you know, next week is a big, uh, due date, uh, your tax filings for sole proprietors, LLCs, and S-Corps are due on Thursday, March 15th. And so uh, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about ex about filing and extensions and all that kind of stuff. Is that right? I thought sole proprietors weren't due till April. Yeah, I just looked it up today. It says sole props March, uh, March. March 18th. 
yeah. On March 18th. Yeah, it's usually yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. It's the Monday yeah, after March 15th. The, yeah, whatever. The third, the whatever. That yeah. They're yeah. Now, if you that's with the cash basis. So if you end of your year is it, you know December 31st, but if uh, if you're on an accrual basis where maybe your end of year is you know in February, that that date is not correct. It's you have um, three months after that to to get okay to get it paid. Okay, uh, but, See, I, I thought, but let's March give March 15th, 2018. Is the deadline for filing an S corp or a partnership return, but personal yeah. return, which is what a sole proprietorship oh, no, no. Per- is? Yeah, yeah, personal return. So yeah, I, okay, so I'll, I'll stand corrected. So and, yeah, uh, and a C corp we'll we'll also is due by the. Um, uh, oh no, maybe not. No, uh, C corp's in April. C corp yeah. is April. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so it's partnership this is a good spot. F- yep. Yeah, this is a good spot for a disclaimer that right. uh, <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're taking uh, tax advice from two business owners, not two accountants. Right. And uh, so but, you but definitely no, that, want to. Th- that's, that's correct. Personal yeah. and C Corp is April 17th. Um, because I assume the 15th falls on a weekend. Um, yes. It, and it falls it's on Monday. A Friday. Yeah. And, and also, falls there's, on a I think yeah. Monday is Emancipation Day in Washington. DC and so they don't you can't file on that Monday which is the 16th correct so this week you file on Tuesday so correct correct and yeah. then but yep. the S corp and partnership uh, is the 15th so if Got you're it. a sole proprietor filing on your personal return you have till April to file otherwise if you're a sole proprietor with a partnership which technically isn't a partnership but you can file right. it that way then then you're March 15th yeah yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that'll come yeah so you know, listen to the show. Uh, we're going to reference a few shows we've done in the past, and you know, re- get whatever tips that might be helpful for you. But then follow up with your accountant because, of course, your uh, personal situation is and your business situation is different than Dave's uh, or mine, and so you want to definitely get some tips on there. So, um, so what happens if you can't file your uh, your taxes next week for your LLC? Uh, well, whether you can or not, I assume you're filing for an extension because you get, well, that's what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and the the important part is understand that you can file for an extension on the paperwork, but you cannot file for an extension to pay what you owe. Right. So if you think you're going to get, uh, for your personal return, if you think you're going to get money back or with your business return, if you have no tax due or no additional tax due, if you've paid estimated or whatever it is, then you're fine. But um, but otherwise, with that extension or before it, uh, you need to send in your uh, a payment, you know, an estimated yeah, they, payment. Yeah, they want to see 90 percent of what you believe your taxes are, are going to be. Uh, the not 90 percent of what due. you believe. 90 percent of that, what they yeah, that's will true. be. They don't care yeah, what, what they believe. will be, not what you believe. <laughs> that's a good point. I swear that's I believed it. Yeah. Yes. We, yes. We yes. believe you. Also, here's yep. a fine and a penalty. And interest. that's right. Yeah. It's yeah. Great. So if you don't pay that 90 percent, uh, you know, you're going to pay a penalty and you're going to pay interest. Um so, but the thing is, if even if you can't pay, you need to file that extension. The late filing penalty is usually much more expensive than the penalties and in interest, depending how much you owe. That's a really um, good piece of advice. That's right. File yep. the extension even file if you it. don't have the cash to pay. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. The two yep. are, 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 I mean, timing wise, there are the deadlines for the two are the same. But in terms of uh, actually sending them in, they are not joined at the hip. You can do one instead of the other. And if you can only do one and there's no reason you can't file an extension. So that would be the one. Do it. That's right. Like you said, because otherwise then you start getting whacked for fee, for late filing yeah. fees. You, you're burying yourself. Yeah, yeah. You're just you're just burying yourself for more and more. And and hopefully if you've seen like, you know, I'm. Most of my companies uh, have been where we own stuff, you know, inventory and products. And it's very easy to show that you're, I mean, to make a bunch of money and then ask yourself, where is all that money? And then walk in your warehouse and have a few million dollars worth of inventory that you've bought. Uh, So if you can't make your quarterlies, uh, your quarterly tax payments, you know, the previous year, like if you were having trouble in 2017, 17, making those quarterlies, you're probably going to have trouble making the payment you know, in, uh, in March. So you need to plan. You got to get, got to get stuff figured out. Uh, it, it should be no surprise to you. Right. It should be. Yeah. Should be. Right. Yeah. But, but sometimes it is. I, I, um, I've had years in the know, past. I mean, it's been a too. while, but I've had them where it's like, Oh, right. Yeah. I know. It's yeah. not really a surprise, yeah. but it's, 
it's it's not yeah. it's not what you were planning for. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So you know, and extensions typically good for six months. Uh, double check that with your accountant. Sometimes they have three months extensions, but um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with filing extensions. I, I've filed extensions for each of my businesses every year for the past twenty years. I'm never ready. Same. Uh, I, I, and I mean. I probably could be more ready, but I'm always got something else going on and, and I haven't got all the paperwork. Um, even today I'm sitting at my desk and I see, you know, I've got like five big manila envelopes that I've been collecting all this tax paperwork that's been coming in from various sources. Um, and you know, stuff that I have to get to my account that I haven't got to them yet. And there's no way you can dump that on them. Uh, as you get close. And and I've just found it's actually a much better, more relaxed experience to work with your accountant after March and April have passed. And, you know, working with your accountant in June is an entirely different experience oh, yeah. than working with them you in get, February. You get or more March, attention right? out of them. I, yeah, I noticed yeah. on every year I put on my calendar, you know, sometime toward the end of February, send corporate tax info to Bob. Right. And yeah. it, you know, I, I, I wind up kicking that can down the road for a couple of months. <laughs> I was going to say, right. Well, but you know, yeah. the thing is when the day actually comes in whatever, probably, you know, late spring, early summer, when I actually do it, it takes me less than two hours, right? Because sure. all, everything's already come in and it's super easy. And, and I always think, well, man, why don't I send this stuff? Like, why did I wait till June to do this? Like, yeah, I could have done this yeah. in March. But the reality is, yeah, I probably actually today I know that I have all my uh, all the stuff I need. And it's all in our accounting software. We use QuickBooks, like generating the, the simple reports that he needs from me. It would take less than an hour for all four businesses, really, at this point. Yeah. And so. I might do it before I go away. I'm going to South by Southwest down in Austin next week. I might do it. Nice. And I probably realistically, I probably won't. And I, I was thinking the exact same thing you just said. It's like, you know, I've never done this with Bob in March. I wonder if he would, you know, have spend the same amount of time. Even if he spends the same amount of time, his mental energy is going to be distracted, right? Because he's got a zillion yes. things going on right now. It's like, yeah, maybe, maybe I really should wait until May to send this to him. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the key thing is uh, to communicate give your them. accountant. Yeah, yeah, communicate, talk to them, and you know, if you want those extensions filed, make sure you tell them, and don't just assume that it's going to happen right. uh, unless you're, uh, you know, some. So, uh, you know, all you have to do is fire off a quick email. These guys can get this stuff filed with a few clicks. Uh, you know, on their yeah, they have the magic their computer, the magic avenue yes. to the IRS. That's, That's right. right. I mean, I send my guy and he sends me back. Here you go. Here's the confirmations. Uh, you know, it's done in like ten minutes. So yeah. you have those confirmations. You can file them away, and you know that okay, now I've got. And now, now I can procrastinate a little bit more and, and, and put <laughs> it off. Kick the can uh, down know. the road. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick the can down the road. So, and, and, you know, the same is with your personal taxes, you know, same rules apply. You, you want to pay 90% avoid penalties and fees. Uh, and, you know, again, that communication with your accountant, let them know what's going on and make sure that you ask for an extension for both your businesses and your, uh, your personal stuff. You don't, totally. need, you don't want any surprises. No, you know? no, I, yeah. I don't. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's right. Um, I want to take a minute here and talk about our first sponsor for this episode, which is Jamf Now. Um, that's J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S. That's where you go to sign up for Jamf Now, which is a device management solution for all of your Apple devices at work. So these are your iPhones and iPads, of course, but also your Macs. And what this does is it taps into something that Apple has created called mobile device management, where you can actually control all kinds of different settings, like configure Wi-Fi, configure email, deploy apps. You can protect data. You can even lock or wipe a device from anywhere remotely without having to tether that device to your computer, right? Could be on a different network, could be uh, in a different country. As long as it's on the, it has access to the internet, somehow you can manage these devices remotely. And where this gets really interesting is when you've got a couple of devices that your company needs to manage or you need to manage for your company, because let's face it, so much of the time we become our own tech support, right? So 
you've got somebody that's got a Mac or somebody that's got an iPhone, somebody that's got an iPad, you need to make sure they get some apps on it. But you're running a virtual company and that thing is, or you got a salesperson out in the field and that device is way far away. Well, guess what? You get to do this. You get to check on it. You get to do all of it remotely. And here's the cool part. I mentioned it at the beginning. You get three devices for free forever. I don't want to say you get your first three devices for free forever, because if you put two, if you put three devices in and take one out, you can put another device in and that's still part of your, your three free, right? You get three. That's free, awesome. And then after that, uh, it's just two bucks a device a month, right? So super affordable. And, uh, and, and you get that because you're going to go to jamf, J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S, of course, for small business show. And that gets you those first three devices for free forever. It's cool yeah, everybody stuff. that's listening ought to get those first three devices because yeah. you know these. I mean, it, the, the, there's no reason not to, and it's awesome software. I've been using it, you know, since we uh, brought Jamf online, and you've had longer experience with it. Yeah, so it's cool. and you know, I would even say start using it even if you don't need it for your business. Start using it for your family, right? You can manage your yep. kids' phones, or if you've got parent, if you're a if you're a little bit of a geek, and maybe your parents aren't, or whatever. You can start doing this and get a feel for how it works. And then it makes it even easier to integrate into your business when that time comes, when you grow and you need that stuff. So check it out. J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S. Our thanks to Jamf for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Very Moving cool. On. Very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're kind of wrap up on extensions here. We'll put some links in the show notes to you can file these extensions yourself online if you want to. Um, you know, if you're uh, don't, haven't picked out an accountant, because we've talked to before about not picking an accountant out this time of year. <laughs> so, yes, uh, you want to you want to wait. It's true. And, if you uh, don't have an accountant, file your extensions yourself and go find an yeah. accountant in May or, or you yeah. Know, when, yeah, when they're back from their vacations. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to just try to sneak in and that you're just not going to get the kind of uh, attention and, you know, it just looks kind of squirrely and you're running into them to solve the problem. You want to develop that relationship over time and uh, uh, you'll have a, you'll have a better experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I, I want to reference, you know, if you're ha- one of the reasons lots of people, well, I shouldn't say lots of people, but s- some folks, you know, may not get those extensions filed or, you know, may may try to ignore things that are going on with the IRS. If you're having issues with the IRS, you know, we did a show uh, back in uh, March of 2016, where we talked about ways to interact the with the, the uh, IRS. And I, I really recommend that you listen to it because there's some really a couple of critical tips in that show that can change your whole experience working with the IRS. And, you know, the, the I, I just want to mention the first one is, you know, we talked a lot on that show, how to humanize your relationship with the IRS. You really want to connect with an individual at the IRS that can help you uh, get through this problem, whatever it is, you know, it's usually you owe money that you can't pay. Right. But, or if there's a paperwork issue or something, and maybe you don't owe that money. I mean, don't always assume that they're correct, you know? Um, And, and so the, the worst thing to do is stick your head in the sand and try to ignore it because it is not going away. Um, and uh, you, you, if you reach out and talk with them in, in, in portray yourself in a certain way, you, again, you can humanize that relationship and it will change everything for how, how you work with the IRS. And the other thing is, uh, the other tip we talked about in that show was don't forget that you're the customer of the IRS you're not trying to please them. They actually in their kind of uh, code of conduct or whatever you want to call it, their mission is to treat you well and to treat, you know, and you're the customer. Yeah. So yeah, if remember you the work people them, that you're, you're talking with the, at the IRS, they're not the ones that wrote the tax law, right? Exactly. They didn't write the yeah. tax code. They probably don't have any political, benefit or even personal benefit in rewriting the tax code. And guess what? Oh, yeah. Even if they did, they're not the people that can change it, right? It's not their right. rules. They want to help you through those as best they can without breaking them because uh, you yeah. know, like that it's, it's their job and also it's the law, but, uh, but yeah, you can, you, I like this idea of humanizing. It's really important. And, and remembering your, you are the customer. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, 
if if you don't have an accountant and you you know you you're going to have to deal with them directly but even if you have an accountant you should talk to them about it and they can help guide you too cuz it may be that your accountant says hey you know why don't you make this phone call uh, and answer this letter and I'll stay out of this one and it, you may get some better results and you know if it's some smaller dollar amounts i mean if it's some huge thing you're obviously going to have to get you know some some uh, somebody else involved, but I've just found that you can really solve some problems quickly if you get the right person uh, on the phone. And you know, if you don't get the right person on the phone, just request somebody else. That's it. Super easy. It, it's super easy. I have done it several times. Um, if there's some grumpy person on the phone that you just like, wow, I just don't have a good connection with this person. Ask for someone else. It'll it's easy as that. No problem. I'll get another agent for you and they become your, your contact, ask for their extension, ask for their email, you know, and start building a relationship with them of trust. And if they trust you, they're going to go that extra mile to help you through this problem. Yep. It's true. So it's, it's yeah. Real, yeah, real important. So um, we're talking about phone calls here. And I, I did want to mention one thing, you know, along with this time of year with tax file, there's tons of IRS scams out there. Um, and I, I just read about one yesterday where the IRS was reminding people that you cannot pay your taxes with iTunes gift cards. And I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> it was a real story, not fake news. Uh, and uh, I was like, wow. So, you know, if... Number one, the IRS is not going to call you first. They will always mail you a letter. Yeah. Uh, they may call you back once you've made a contact with them and you have yeah, but this You'll know the person relation. there, and, or at yeah, the very correct. least, you'll have a file number and they'll say, hey, you I'm so-and-so, we've never spoken before, but yep, I'm calling yep. on behalf of so-and-so That's that you right. do know, and here's the file number. They they know yep. that those phone call, those scam phone calls are far more common than an actual phone call from the IRS. So when they call you, you they go out of their way to prove to you who they are. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to make sure you're aware of that. Um, and then the same thing with before you make any payments, settlements, any kind of agreements when you're on the phone, ask them to confirm everything in writing that they, they'll send you a letter and they'll say, you know, we've agreed in this, uh, let's say it's an installment plan. You know, one time, you know, one of my companies, we owed some money and I, we just didn't have it. And they said, okay, we understand you didn't, don't have it, but, and we, and we appreciate your willingness to, uh, to work this out and we'll make these settlements. We'll waive the penalty. It's a very low interest rate. We want to make sure that you're going to make these thing, these payments and get this taken care of. And they mail you a letter to that effect. And then you start making payments. Uh, You just want to have that in writing. So you have it for your record. So I just wanted to point that out. Huh? That's pretty cool now that they, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, they would do that for you. Oh, that's good. Yeah. They, I mean, they'll, they'll do for anybody. It, it, you just, it, you know, you got to show them that, Oh, you know, I know we made this mistake or yeah, you know, yeah. we had, had a, had a rough time this time of year, had some unexpected expense, you know, our forklift died and I had to spend $20,000 to buy a new one. And that was the money we were going to pay. Whatever. Whatever. Um, it is. Yeah. They, yeah. Well, tell it, them the truth. You know, yes. Communicate is the key. Yep. If you put your head in the sand, then you will feel the weight of the IRS pushing your head even deeper into the sand. Because yeah, because that's the only thing they can do at you, that point. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. So that's cool. So I, I want to uh, touch on a couple things. You know, we did uh, a show recently about the 2018 tax law changes. For the most part, those are not going to impact your 2017 taxes. Okay. Um, there was a there's a couple of one change about deduction of uh, health care expenses. But, you know, ask your accountant about that. They, they can they can help you with that. Um, lots of good stuff coming down the road for small businesses, especially if you're an LLC or pass through. Oh, yeah. But yeah. But those changes becomes a good year yeah, for that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, we'll link we did a show back in January and uh, uh, we'll, we'll put the link in the uh, show notes for you to listen to that show. And. Let me see here. What other kind of good stuff that I want to touch? Oh, yeah. So uh, hopefully you, you've got a good piece of accounting software. You're keeping track of your expenses. But the, the one thing I see over and over, and I talk to a lot of small business owners now, um, is especially with those getting started, is they miss deducting or keeping track of all of the expenses that you could deduct. Um, and, you know, what does it truly take to run your business? Stuff like promotional items, marketing, travel, advertising, you know, you got to keep track of all this stuff, your software, services, your website, you know, home office expenses, you know, get some help with that to be sure you're, uh, you're, you're keeping track of that correctly. Your insurance, health care, other insurance, all this stuff, you really have to kind of keep a running tab if you're 
and, and hopefully that accounting software is doing that for you as your bills coming in, you're entering them, and then you're spitting that out to your accountant at the end of the year. One thing that um, I find super helpful, and it it seems a little tedious, but it really is just valuable, especially to me, is I I do my you know top level P and L right from my accounting sure. software, which just shows me top level line items like you know here's what I spent on payroll, here's what taxes, here's you know what I spent on telephones and internet and. I open up each one of those uh, and look at the details inside to make sure that things are categorized correctly. Right. Nice. And yeah, more smart. often than not, I find one thing, you know, there might be 30 things in there. It's, you know, an expense that we have twice a month or something. I mean, you know, think about think about it that way. It's not like for most businesses, especially, you know, most small businesses, it's not like you're going to have a thousand transactions in one category that you need to go through. There's probably going to be, you know, less than a hundred. And it's really not that much to just scroll through and look, you can see where it was, you know, the, the vendor that it, that it went to. And, and of course the dollar amount. And I always wind up like recategorizing some things and yeah, it feels a little tedious when you talk about it, but going through it, it's like, oh, this is where all the stuff is happening. And I get to go back and like revisit the entire year. It can give you a feel for like, especially, you know, this is a good time of year to look back and say, wow, is it really, are we really spending that much? You, you know, those great. monthly recurring expenses where you're, it, you know, whatever, two, three, four, five hundred dollars for, you know, your cell phones as you sort of just amass stuff and you pack it all in. You're like, oh, yeah, we can afford that or whatever. Then you look, it's like, wow, we're really yeah. we spent thirty five hundred dollars on that last year. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, do we really need that? And then it's worth, you know, having a phone call with your, uh, you know, whatever, with your cell provider and just yeah. ask them, say, dude, we're paying too much. Then, you know, what? most of the time, those places, yeah, they'll lower your bill. You know, especially yeah. your internet provider at your office, right? That's one of those expenses. You're like, yep, we need it. You're not going to cancel it. So whatever the number is, you just pay it every month. And then when you look back yeah. at a year, yeah, maybe that's we up. But yeah, let's dig in. Let's yeah. call them and ask. So it, it well, does. I do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I do the same thing, and I always wind up saying these four words: "How can that be?" <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I always am looking at like, how did we spend three hundred thousand dollars with UPS? And then I print that out, and I said, "Hey, UPS rep, we need to go to lunch, you know, and, yeah. and sit down <laughs> and talk and say, look, you know, what's going on, and we need to get some better better rates, you know, that that kind of thing." So yeah, we just that, need, yeah, really exactly. Cool. Like, look, we spent three hundred grand with you. Good, I think you advice. could do yeah. better better than uh, better than that with us. And it's again, yeah. it's one of those things. Like, you're not gonna cancel your relationship with UPS, right? I mean, you no, need them. No, it's just part of do. the deal. But, yeah. you know, looking at it big picture like that as, and getting out of the weeds as you are, you know, on a day to day basis, you might look and see it come in like, oh, yeah, there's the expense and we paid it. No problem. Thank thankfully, we had the cash flow to cover it right the, on a daily basis and even on a weekly basis. You're that's what you're looking at is, you know, can we can we keep the business going and growing? Great. Awesome. Then when you can look back, you know, you have a different perspective. So, yeah, let's, and, let's and you, I think let's it's you put your business owner hat on. Yeah, right. And as part of the our char charmed life strategy that we talked about or we talk about all the time on this show, you can also say things like, look, I spent 300 grand with you last year. Where are those NFL tickets that you, why oh, am yeah. I not getting invited to this event? And what about the masters that you guys sponsored last year or this kind of thing? And and those kind of when you drop those kind of things, things or those little hints things magically start showing up in the mail to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've taken my kids to all kinds of NFL stuff, met 49er players, and we went to the Orange Bowl with FedEx and all kinds of great stuff that they are often readily available and want to help you out, but you you may have to kind of nudge them you a gotta, little bit. Yeah, it's okay to ask. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Put a smile Absolute. on your face. You know, like, I, I like it. the way you said it, like, Hey, where, where are those NFL hey, tickets? Man. Yeah. I, yeah. I expect, you know, always it. joke around about it. And I yeah. saw you guys were sponsoring the, this golf tournament back in Atlanta. Any chance of, uh, you know, getting us hooked up for that? You yeah. know, and if they just go, ask. Oh man, we just can't do it. Okay. No problem. You know, but I just spent 300 grand with you. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to ask. Just, and yeah, and ask I always again, tell yeah. people when, when somebody says no, especially when it's one of those things that's like a kind of sort of favor, but could be argued is, you know, more than that. 
uh, you know, I ask. And when they say, oh, man, I can't. I wish I could. No problem. But just so you know, uh, I'm going to ask you again next year. Yeah. You know, keep me in mind. Yeah. yeah. Keep and, me in mind. And, and then when you ask them again next year, you get to say, hey, just so you know, uh, as I told you, I'm going to ask you about this. So here, here's me asking. <laughs> That's right. And it, then, you know, they're they, like, they, yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. Do that for a couple of years. Suddenly NFL tickets show up. So. Yeah, I yep. agree. Yep. Yeah. So last thing I'm on my list uh, today to talk about was, you know, if you find yourself looking for ways to lower that your taxable income, especially as small business business owners, you know, how much ask yourself how, and look at how much have you contributed to your retirement accounts this year? There's all kinds of ways and all kinds of rules that you want to talk to your accountant about, uh, depending upon income, age, uh, all kinds of stuff that you really can max out. Some some of the numbers are pretty, pretty impressive that you could write a check to your, you know, retirement accounts and, and you have until April 17th to make that contribution for last year as well is before you file your individuals. Right. Uh, you definitely want to ask, look into that stuff. Um, and even if you're, you know, young and in your twenties and you're bulletproof and you're never going to retire, you need to be putting money in. That's, 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 that, that's that would the be time. the best time to put money away. Yeah. If I could yep. go back and, you know, of course, make some different decisions. I, that's one of the ones I would do is like yeah. all that stupid money you spent, just put it away, pay yourself, that's pay right. your future self first. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and if you're older enough and you have kids that are actually, you know, old enough to push a broom or pick up a box and they worked for you at all, uh, you know, you can pay them and, and actually, you know, through their for their work throughout the year up to fifty five hundred bucks. Man, that number actually may be increased because that was a few years ago. Um, and tax free, uh, they're not going to pay any taxes up on that. Put them on your payroll and, and just have them like stick it in a Roth account. And just think if you were, you know, 10 or 12 years old and your parents dumped that kind of cash in a Roth, you know, every year when things were good, uh, what that number would be like right now. Yeah. Uh, and that money's tax free for them to withdraw that from. So it, it's a, it's a great thing to talk to your accountant about how to pay your kids or, you know, some relative that you got working for you. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Very Those cool. are my tips. And we'd love to hear your tips or we'd love to have you tell me where I'm wrong, which happens pretty much uh, all the time, which is great because I get to learn. Uh, feedback at businessshow.co or businessshow.co slash Facebook. Come talk to us uh, in the small business support group and share your knowledge. That's it, man. Yeah. Cool. Keep living that charmed life. That's uh, that's how we do it, I think. Big I thanks think so. to Jamf, J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S. That's all I got, man. See you too. Take it easy, everybody. 